Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be working on expanding our chicken run. They desperately need more space, so stick around and I'll show you guys how we do this. Before I get started, I'm gonna measure everything out, make sure that I've got it all planned out and everything is square with the property line and the chicken coop and everything lines up. Now the fence that is right here on our property line is actually off a little bit, so I'm not gonna be following that. I'll be following the chicken coop and the property line that we have. I'll also be putting a stake at all the corners on this chicken run just so then I can run a string around it and sort of visualize how big this is going to be. Once I have this all laid out and I know where all the posts are going to go, I'm going to take my postal digger and dig down two to two and a half feet into the ground and this doesn't need to be wide, just the width of the post or the postal digger and I'm not going to be filling this with concrete, it's just going to be the dirt, I'll backfill it and that'll be perfectly fine for what we're building today. Now quick tip to save you some money on a project like this, we're actually using landscape timbers instead of 4x4s or round posts. Especially with lumber prices being so high, you gotta get a little creative sometimes to save some money. And this is why, for an 8 foot long post, a 4x4 will be $17, a four inch round post is about $14, and for $5 you can purchase these landscape timbers. Now these landscape timbers are basically right in between a four inch round post and a four x four with two flat sides on either side of the post and then two rounded sides. So if you don't mind the look of these, they're definitely a better option. They'll be just as strong as a four x four pretty much and they are pressure treated and will last just as long. So this is definitely a great option if you wanna save more than $10 per post at the time of this video. After I dig each hole, I'm gonna place the post inside the hole and start filling it in with dirt. Before I get too far, I wanna make sure that this post is plumb. We're on a little bit of a hill here, so it can be very deceiving if I try to use my eye to level it, as the hill can throw you off. So it's really important to use a level and make sure that you're double checking your work and everything is gonna look great once the fence is all finished. The next step will be wrapping this enclosure with fencing. The fencing isn't only to keep in the chickens. Chickens are very vulnerable animals and can easily be taken away by many different predators. So we're gonna keep our chickens safe and keep them in here with this fencing here. Now the holes on this are fairly large. The chickens can still reach their heads out and that may be a safety risk for them. Predators still might be able to grab them through the fencing. So you may wanna take some hardware cloth or chicken wire that has smaller holes and run that around just the bottom two feet of the fence all the way around. To strengthen up the fence a bit more, we're going to run a board across the top of that fencing and then one along the ground level as well. So I'm actually going to be using these deck boards. They're not as chunky as 2x4s. The 2x4s are a little overkill for this. So I'm just going to be ripping those deck boards down the middle and that will be perfect for what I'm using. These are also a bit cheaper than 2x4s at $8 for an 8 foot piece and the deck boards are right at $10.50, which if you split that in half is only $5.25. So again, that just saves you a few bucks. Instead of $16 for two boards, you'll be only spending 10 and a half. Now the prices of lumber have fluctuated so much in the last year, so I would just recommend if you're going to build something like this, check out the prices and see what options you have and what actually would save you money because this may not be the case in a year from now.
We have the enclosure completely surrounded with four foot tall fencing. That's not quite enough for around here. Animals can easily climb over that. And we have lots of hawks that can easily carry off a chicken and they will if we don't cover this up. So we're actually gonna be covering the top with chicken wire. This doesn't need to be as rugged. It can be a lot lighter weight stuff. But we're actually gonna put in one post in the middle and a beam going across just to support so that that chicken wire doesn't sag down in the middle. If you want to, these posts are just about at six feet. You can continue that fencing up all the way to that height and you can easily walk into the chicken coop and not have to bend over at all. We actually wanted to have it a little bit lower. They already have a section where we can walk in where all their food and water will be, where we, where we regularly go into. So this won't be a problem for us. Every once in a while we'll have to go in there to maybe straighten up the dirt and make sure that they're not digging any holes. Now as you're running a long stretch of chicken wire like this, you're gonna want to overlap those seams about three to six inches. And then what you're gonna wanna do is either stitch those together with some wire, or you can cut one side of those hexagons on the end of the roll and cut about every other shape. And then you can use those tails that it creates of this wire and wrap them around together on both sides of the seam. And this really attaches it well and won't allow that to open up. I'm gonna open up the doorway for the chickens to get into their new chicken run. They are definitely excited to get out here and kind of stretch out a bit more and eat all the bugs that are in this section. Now you can see here, this is just a day later and they've really torn up the section, eaten a lot of the grass, but then just a week later, there is no grass left. They've dug it up completely. They'll eat all the roots, all the leaves, everything. And then they'll start digging holes too. So we actually went in there and raked it out, made sure it's nice and level so that they don't end up digging their way out on accident. Now I'm also gonna be spreading rocks around the outside of this chicken run. This really helps keep animals from digging holes underneath the, the run and getting inside and getting to them. The larger the rocks, the better, because they try to dig underneath, it will fall on them and keep filling the hole as they try to dig. So this is great for keeping the chickens in as well as keeping the predators out. Now, if you don't have property with a ton of rocks on that you can use, you can purchase these like we did at a landscape supply. At our landscape supply, you can purchase it by the bucket. So I just purchased one bucket and it was enough to line our whole chicken run. I want to take this time to give a big shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much for everything you do and your support for the channel. I really appreciate it and I truly would not be able to do everything without you. Now that just about finishes up the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. The chickens absolutely love their extra space. Chickens can actually be pretty mean to each other and pluck each other's feathers out. And we've actually seen that they are treating each other a lot better now that they have more space, more room to stretch out. So hopefully the chickens enjoy this and makes them a little happier. If you wanna see more of these videos, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon as well and that will give you a notification when I upload a new video. 
I have a video posted on how to build this chicken coop. If you're interested, go check that out. I'll leave the link right here on the end of this video. If you've made it this far into the video, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.